Hi. Uh, thanks for uh, thanks for the invitation. Um, I just like to share with you my twenty years of ex journey that I went through. So um, it's not so easy, I mean, when we first started, because uh, industrial design was a very small industry in Singapore. So let me just run through my introduction. All right. So my name is basically uh, is Kenny. I graduated from Tomasic Poly in '94. Then I did my masters at uh, Domus Academy in '07, and I was the head of product development at uh, Design Studio, and up until 2014. Then 2014, I I came out and I set my own uh, company, a design consultancy doing uh, product furniture. Uh, it's called Eleven H. And I'm also teaching at some of the schools, not far NTU as I am. So, um, so I just run through uh, some of the companies that from the beginning till the end. Now, what I'm doing. So, first company I started working was uh, Air Research. Air Research is a uh, small startup, a small company that does uh, air cleaners using ultraviolet rays to kill bacteria and germs. So, some of the products that I when I first joined them, it was a, a, like a 10-person 10, 10 company. So we designed air cleaners. I was the only designers that, and we did everything. So uh, from the product, uh, to the packaging, to the brochure, instruction, design, and whatever else <laughs> that, <laughs> that encompassed. But it, I think it was a good thing that, uh, for me, I, I mean, it's... Okay, when I first started the, the job, right, uh, or when I first came out, I wanted, uh, it's, it's a little bit strategic for me, I, I just felt that uh, I wanted to do a job that can... One day I come out and do myself. Alright, so when we graduate as a de product designer, uh, basically it's very shallow, we just know a little bit of everything. A little bit of engineering which is like not very useful and a little bit of product crowd rendering and all. So it's neither here nor there. So I felt that I was very uh, kind of lost but how to do it. And, and during then, that time, there were not so many product design companies in Singapore. That was in 96, 96, 97 when I graduated. So I, I, I thank God I managed to land on this small little company that gave me some work experience. Huh? So this is one of those products that we did. It's a car air sterilizer with the packaging, with the product design and the uh, instruction manual. Then I, I joined this company called Aluminum Structure. It's uh, from 96 on. So, uh, so this company is a street furniture company. They, they Okay, actually they started off as a heli, uh, aluminum building company. So they built helidex, aluminum bridge for offshore rigs. And they went into uh, street furniture. So they branched out to a company called Aluminum Structures. They do street furniture. So bus shelters, uh, hand railings, uh, aluminum signage, everything in aluminum. So this was uh, one of the projects that I did. It's a hand railing that can swivel and, and, and run through all the so we designed a little catch, the connectors that turns using casting and extrusion. So this company, for the first company that I went in, I, I basically learned everything like packaging and then uh, turret punching, metal stamping, a little bit of injection molding, and then learned to deal with newspaper and prints and all that stuff. This company went in, I, I learned about extrusion, sand casting, die casting. So for me, it's like when I have an opportunity to learn something, I, I, I go, I take the job. So this company gave me the opportunity to learn the extrusion. So, th so these are some of the railings that this is at McRitchie Walk. So you can see them around, I think, uh, SMU and all this stuff, they have that. Then, uh, then later I joined this company called Technic Group. Technic Group started, uh, I joined them in 99. So it's the longest I, just, I stayed with them, 12 years. So I was there with 12 years, so they are an office furniture company. So they, they design and fabricate their own office furniture. So one of the first product I did was this product called X2. X2 is a desking-based system. 
that has a main spine and everything is mounted on the spine from the CPU holder, wire tray, cantilever brackets then you can mount your tabletop, then you have your accessories and the screen then it can be configured from a single workstation 120 degrees, 90 degrees type of uh, setup so this product came out uh, this was designed during the internet startup 2000 people were a lot of small setup company and then they started expanding very fast so we were trying to capture this small market where one moment they are a team of five or six and then slowly they kind of expand 20 and then 25 and then go 100 you know that kind of company so here this product is supposed to help uh, create multiple usage of space so one moment you can have a product that uh, have a small meetings area with the mobile screen two tables put together you know and then have a whiteboard and then if there's an increase in stuff all you need to do is uh, buy the screen add-on and then you hook up the CPU holder then you get another two workstation then if you notice the legs are com uh, comes with the caster wheel so you can just move around and configure yourself so then a few years later uh, Singtel bought into Optus Australia so they wanted us to kind of uh, apply to sell and you know install in Australia but Australia had a lot of uh, ergonomics standards it, it must have clearance space for the knees it must be high adjustable so we, with the X2 there was no such thing so, so we, I, I, I designed this leg specifically for the Optus project so we moved the spine from the centre to the back for clearance then I took the spine down and created a, a L leg same spine from the, the centre and then we made this high adjustable with a few mechanism inside so this was the high adjustable one and then we had a fixed leg then, uh, then a few, uh, I think one or two years later my company bought over a woodworking company so they, this company has a, a, a line system where you can put in the board, cut 45 degrees, move to the next station, inject uh, rubber substrate and then they will go to the end and fold it up. So it, it gives you a 45, 90, uh, beautiful 45 degree mitre's joint rather than your cabinet. Uh, this one is fully filled. So normally the cabinet will be, have one panel on top and one on the side. Then you see this line on there. So it's quite uh, not so nice. So here you can do a 45 degree minus, so the line is just right at the corner. And uh, so, so with that, that production, I, I did this cab series of cabinet. And at the same time, the cabinet, because it's wood, right? Normally it's 18 mm, 16 mm, 18 mm, 25 mm. So what I wanted to do is make the wood cabinet look slim like a metal cabinet. So what I did was I carved the wood on the front. Then I embed the, the drawers to hide the 18mm thick, but it looks like 9mm only in front. So it kind of like slim down the whole cabinet visual, but yet still maintain certain warm because of the wood finish. Yeah, so, so this was the XK series. Then uh, it, after, after I came back from my master's, because I, I still had to serve my bond because they paid for my, sal my studies over there. So I worked three years with them and then I, I got pushed to come to this company called Design Studio. So Design Studio is a contract furnishing company. They do uh, interior feed out. So, so, the, so from the start, right, I started off with the product, metal in, injection, and then I go into aluminum extrusion, casting. Then when I went to uh, Technic Group, the office manager one, it, it basically covered everything. Extrusion, casting, uh, woodwork, they have CNC for wood routering and plastic injection. So it gives me the whole lot of experience over there. So I stayed there for 12 years. Then, uh, then I wanted to come out on my own after three years. Uh, so this company came to me and asked me you know, to join them. So they are doing interior feed out, so it's home. Then uh, for, I Actually, I wanted to set up myself then, but 
but the salary is so good. So <laughs> I, I had to then, and then plus the fact that they, they are coming, uh, they, they give me the exposure to do interior work. So the home furnishing business. So I was very commercial office furniture. So now I, I, so I went there and I joined them. And I basically do, um, I was in charge of the China market. So we are doing like a modular in walk-in wardrobe, you know, uh, sliding door cabinets, uh, wardrobe, uh, swing door, bifold door, and also design kitchens, fit out and all that stuff. So everything in module, so that you can configure different type of design and all that stuff. So, uh, so this was some of the products that we do. Then because I was also in Singapore, so I had to deal with the local setup. So our company, we do a lot of, 55% uh, of the condominiums are done by us. So Interlace, this is Jurong Gateway. Uh, this one is, uh, this is a Sixth Avenue home. So we did some, a lot of the condominiums. So all the showroom, whenever we go, I will do the showroom. Uh, I'm in charge of the showroom because, yeah, because I do the furniture office. So, so I, I do the kitchen wardrobe and the vanities. So this is a uh, home. Up. So these are some of the interior space. This is a Jurong Gateway. And uh, yeah, this is also Jurong Gateway, all the show flats. Then uh, 2014, after three years with them, uh, I, I did a little bit of review. Then I, I felt that I had to come out and do it myself because I was about time, uh, really almost 50. Really. So <laughs> what am I waiting for? So, so I started this company called Eleven H. So a lot of people ask me, hey, what's this IIH, 11H, LLH or what H, you know? So actually it's Eleven H is my initial, Kenny Hong, KH. So I, I didn't want to just take KH, you know, that's right. So one is for A, two is for B, so K is actually 11, the number. So I simplify the initial into four straight lines with one uh, horizontal line. So kind of make it easy for me to make logos and all that stuff for exhibition or whatever, you know. So 11H, so, so one of the first few projects I, when I started in 2014, uh, was a collaboration with uh, A-Star. So A-Star had this material called EL lighting. It's called el electroluminous lighting. So it's a film that when you charge it, it will glow. Comes in a few colors, blue, red, and whatever. So, uh, so they wanted to showcase the material to the furniture industry. So they asked me to do a kind of lighting sculpture or something, anything. Like, so I, I, I came up with a lighting sculpture. So uh, I call this the cloud. So it's, it's a f uh, kind of like a thrilling, flexible film movement throughout. throughout. So, so this is called the cloud, uh, yeah, using the film. So uh, one year later, it was shown in the I, I Like Marina Bay. So this is uh, under the gallery stand. Then uh, at the same time, uh, during that period, I was approached by this company called H3D. H3D is selling 3D printers. 3D printers and they want to, they want to sell these printers to the furniture industry people. So they say, what can we do with it? Uh, can you show something, a product that you can kind of get people into it, buying this? So, so, uh, so I designed this uh, few, two pieces of furniture using 3D printers, but 3D printers had a limitation in terms of size, right? So the, that machine was quite, not, not super big, but it was bigger than the usual. Uh, so like 300, 300 by 500 height. So, uh, so I did all the connectors in, in, uh, in uh, 3D printing. Uh, after a little bit of study, uh, that I, I thought that uh, there was some, uh, some value in, uh, in doing this in doing this project because I felt the 3D printers are... Uh, you could do the furniture yourself now, right? We used to be, have to rely on, uh, on uh, carpenters or handy, hand, some kind of craftsmen to do it. Uh, and and they, they... In Singapore, right, all the carpenters got a bit of a dirty one. 
very difficult to get them to do things, especially if something new. So, so I, I get a lot of this kind of frustration with these kind of people. So I, I say, yeah, maybe why not I can bypass them. I can bypass them and I can undercut them. I can make it cheaper than what they can do. And I can make it flexible. I don't have to rely on them to do the work. So, so that was the idea uh, in, in this idea of you know, good, fast and cheap, right? People always say you can only have two, not three. Good and fast, you cannot have it cheap. You know, cheap and f good, you cannot have it fast. Huh? So it's like that. But I felt this product can, with the 3D print, there is this idea of being able to be able to have good, fast and cheap in a certain perspective. So, so, so I did this all in 3D print and, and the woods are all uh, CNC routed out. So I, I could easy, anybody could essentially do it themselves, just as long as they have the file. So this was a mirror also using connectors that are 3D printed. And this mirror has a, it's a one-way mirror, or is it a two-way, one-way mirror, I think. So when you are using it, it's just a normal mirror. So I put my handphone at the back, and if somebody calls you, you can, it will light up and you can vaguely see somebody call you. Lah. All right, if the back is dark. If the front, if the back is bright, you cannot see because, it's, you know, it's like those kind of, mirror that's used in a detective or police station type of thing. So, so here I, I did this mirror and then this center here is a little hook that, will, that you can use to hang your clothes before the night before you can prepare, look at the whole setup. Then, uh, then, you, then you, yeah. So this is how the whole setup. So everything is either CNC cut or, or, or 3D printed out. Right, so, so we, we won a, a launch patch price in Hong Kong two, two years ago or something. Yeah. Then uh, along the way, I uh, also got a project. This was a kind of long-term uh, customer of mine. They do stationery, plastic injection molding stationery. So, uh, so they approach me and then they say, you know, market business is quite bad. Oops, telephone call. Sorry. Okay. So, so they, they, I mean, uh, you know, office when uh, the stationary box like, uh, in trays and all that stuff, uh, business are uh, nobody's buying those things really, because uh, we don't get so much facts and what information, right? Mostly are uh, just emails, so a lot less paper. So they don't have this business there, and then you know customers in America and all that stuff are, are ordering less and all that stuff. So they wanted to kind of branch out into something different. So so uh, so they approached me to come out with some lifestyle stuff, lah. So I say maybe we can try go into the home home furnishing direction, right? So so we created a series of uh, products, but there was still there was still trays because he's still trying to do the office tray business now. So this is a, a a basic tray that you can it can be it's also a little modular. You can take it out, uh, not not by the homeowner but by the manufacturer, so they can change. So the more cost for the base is the same. You add on this, you get a pencil holder. You add on that, you get a remote control holder. And then you add on something else, you get a, a key, key ring and all that stuff. So this, all this thing can be adapted onto the tray. You can have it stand alone. This one, take it out. You can change it to become a vase. So it's kind of like modular, clip over clip there and all that stuff. So the example is like this. This is a, 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 a tray that you... so so. The, one of the issues that we went through during that period was that we were asking this question. Uh, you know, we always come back and, and we, we don't have a place for our handphones. Or, you know, we just take and put anywhere, charge it, you know, and just leave it there. So there was not, not a dedicated place for handphones. We used to have telephone booth in ho at home where you have a little seat, cushion, book your telephone book and all that stuff. We have pencils, we we'll call you, you write down, sit down. But no more of those things because everybody has a handphone. So, so here I wanted to create a space 
that you can put your handphone, then you can throw your keys, throw your coins and your wallets, all that over there. All right, then, uh, then you can also adapt it if it's in a different situation. Say it's like a coffee table area, so you can have your, your remote control, then you're charging for your handphone. Or it could be at your study area, then you, you have your pencil stationary holder, and then your handphone and keys and all that stuff. So, so that was the, the project we've... So this, I think, is the last project that I'm show, showing. So this is a office furniture project. So uh, this was, used to be my supplier, but they, they, they got bigger than us. They, they became listed and they got listed and then... So they are, they are selling a lot of furniture, but they are in, in Malaysia. So they approached me to do uh, office furniture. Uh, so they are asking, hey, can we do something for online business? Uh, sell sell online. So we want to sell for the home office, small home office type of thing. So we did some research for them and then we came up with certain criteria. So one of the top criteria for home office is of course your charging dock, your power socket and all that stuff. And then come storages and then your shelving and, and then lightings and all. So we came up with this set of criteria and we came up with this series of uh, furniture that you can buy as a four leg table. Standard is with the power socket plug with, uh, with a tray underneath. Then, or you can order them with a storage box underneath. All right. Then, uh, then of course you can add on with shelving or with drawers over the shelving. And then, if you want to buy uh, uh, lights, so there's a holder for your normal IKEA lights and all that stuff. Then uh, the end is a book end, so the book end comes with two type. So one is a wider one and one is a slimmer one. So the wider one is for you to like magnet, post-it notes or whatever you can put over there. So this uh, this was yeah shown, and now we are doing it for a project business, because at the end of the day, still the project is a bigger, bigger market than the home business. Oh, uh, so. So uh, on top of that, we also do some other panel system for them. So rehash their panel system, you know. And because, because they also do showroom, I started doing showroom. Showroom, exhibition, uh, yeah. Ba basically everything that's design related. <laughs> yeah, so, so it's kind of branched out now. I'm also doing uh, environmental graphics and then home renovation uh, in design as well. So it's quite an interesting journey, but yeah, I think this is what I wanted to do all from the start. But of course now it's a different set of problem. You, you, at the end of the month, you've got to worry about salaries, all the stuff and all. Yeah, so that's, that, that's basically it. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Kenny, for sharing us the, uh, the stories, the journey. Uh, just wondering on the, on the floor, is there any questions for him? Yes. Yes. Oh. Hi, Kenny. Hey. Thanks for sharing. Um, I was just curious in the business of furniture making, how do you conceptualize um, the concepts? And uh, is it often validated before it goes out to be put into the market? Or is it more of like a designer's vision and then it gets built out? Oh, so, so just uh, for example, uh, office furniture site, uh, we, we usually uh, look at what the trend is going towards and what is lacking in terms of our product range in the, fam in the family of the, thing, the company. So we see where, where is the shop for. So it's like that little white space that's missing. Then we work towards this direction. So a lot of time, uh, we're still doing a catch up from uh, let's say the Europeans or the Americans. They, they will have a concept like say, now it's, it's, it's open concept. Everybody has this open concept. And, and why? It's not just because uh, okay, so everybody markets it. Oh, it's so cool to have this open space and, and, and then all fun and everything, right? 
But the whole idea is that there is this economic problem, right? So everybody can't afford to buy very expensive furniture. They can't afford to have a lot of space. So they squeeze, squeeze everybody in into this open space. And so you get this open communal space. And, and so what happens next? Too much open space, no privacy. Then you create new products. You create private, private space for this open space. Right? So used to have uh, private space that are like conference room uh, and, and uh, me small meeting room for four or five. Now there are smaller private space that is dedicated for one, for two. It's no more that hierarchy where only the manager or the bosses has a little private space. Even general staff, they want to have a little telephone booth, make a proper conference call with, you know, somewhere overseas. There is this private space for them to create. So it, it's kind of evolved. So we kind of look at the trend, what's moving. And so we set that, uh, we make the decision. So, so this is lacking. We decide, okay, our criteria for the next product has to be something along this line. All right, then, uh, so we use that as a guiding principle. Who determines trend? Who determines trend? Yeah. So it's a, so in the office furniture side, right, it's a little bit of a, from somewhere in the West, <laughs> yeah. So somebody, uh, so the marketing people blows it up, right, and tells us a story about, about uh, the, the, the new way of working or something. Why? Because, because back in the end, there is some struggle, but they don't tell you. Economic problem, not enough uh, money or, you know. So we need to change our, our selling stunt. We need to make it so that it's cheap for the customer to buy more. But we must make it look cool. Make it look exciting. Everybody wants to buy this furniture. Not only because it's cheap, but because it's a new way of working and it helps you to become more productive and it helps you to spend longer time in the office like as though it's your home. Right? So they make it like that. They twist the whole story. So when that story comes, right? Now in, in Malaysia, right? Not so many people are doing it. I mean, there is, but like my manufacturer is it. Got people buy this kind of thing, man. They still, they still back in that trend, right? The thought, right? But this kind of thing uh, will influence from there. Somebody big, the big boys will influence, right? Because they are so strong in the marketing, right? They will influence, and then we will catch it up, right? Then the interior designer will catch it up. Then they will spec it. Then the product uh, office facility managers. They will catch up also. They will say, hey, this is a good idea because it's going to bring down the cost of est real estate. It's going to bring down the cost of investment. There are a lot of uh, plus points in this. So everybody start catching up. So now in Singapore, it's already here already. So now everybody, most of the new companies are going in that kind of direction. Google, Facebook, they are all talking about this and that. So my, cu my customer in, in Malaysia asked me, do you think this will be in, uh, in, Singapore, in Malaysia? I said, sooner or later, it is, you don't have a choice. It will snowball in because who is in influencing this? The interior designer, the product, project manager, or the facility people. So the concept is from some big storyteller, churn it out. Yeah, so we just, we are small players, so we just follow the story and run with them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any questions? Okay. So that's the